Today we have a rock star professional who really knows her craft and also has taken the time to really differentiate herself in the market. And that's why she is really being known for the go-to expert when it comes to helping attorneys implementing technology and automation in their law practice, really knowing their numbers and helping them succeed. She's an awesome person. I've seen her perform and speak and I was like, oh, we've got to get you on growth amplifiers. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Linda Artisani. Perfect. You said it right. <laughs> How are you, Kenny? How is it going? I'm doing great and I'm excited to have you here because we were just chatting away and we we're like, oh man, we, I guess we should start this podcast. Yeah. And yeah. here's the thing. If you're listening now, you're probably on this journey and maybe you've heard me say it before. Maybe you've even considered it, but Linda's actually taken the deep dive. She's actually presented a workshop on it, but we're talking about really niching in your practice. Okay. This seems a little counterintuitive and I'm going to just start by passing the mic to Linda. And before we get into the main topic, because we'll get there in a moment, if you could just start by telling us a little bit about your business and your background, that would be a great place to start. Sure. Um, so I'm Linda Artisani. I'm here in Southwest Florida. So I'm in Florida, just like you are. And I was a generalist for about 15 years or so. And just somewhat recently niched out my practice to working exclusively with attorneys. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I, you know, I, I had this process in place when I decided to make this shift. It had a lot to do with commoditized bookkeeping and all the services that are coming out. And I've always been one that loved technology. So I have been a person that wants to stay ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. I want to be like that old person that's like, look at the newest life I'm going to have. <laughs> you know, that's my goal in life someday. So uh, yeah, so I, I've been working, I've been doing this work as successful business for a long time, but knowing that these are the kind of messages that I've been having by seeing some of these things and seeing where some of the work that I used to work with startups a lot. And mm -hmm. when I started to see the startup work kind of going by way of QuickBooks Live, I decided it was probably a good time to start the change and pivot. And then it's just kind of getting up the courage to decide what you get to do it. It's really a lot about courage, a lot about mapping and planning and that's kind of where I sit today, where I've actually made the leap and it's been the best decision I've ever made in my entire career. Now, and just to be ridiculously clear, some of these service professionals that may be listening in, mm -hmm. they say, I've got a clientele and I don't really, really uh, say I don't take certain types of business. I'll work with anybody. Mm -hmm. And there's there's some pluses to that, but then there's also some cons and it's kind of counterintuitive to realize the benefits are really niching in. Could you share kind of what you see as, as some of the biggest pros and cons when it comes to doing this? Yeah, I think with me, I started out, I had a successful business. I was actually doing really well and I had a little pile of cash in my, my bank account where I was sitting with this money and I knew I needed to I wanted to do it. And mm -hmm. it was just really, like I said, getting the courage, but I had a lot of clients coming to me and it's knowing that I needed to stay ahead of what's coming with the technology. And I mean, the, the simple clients that I had were easy to do, easy mm -hmm. to process. And they were smaller amounts. So I had a lot of clients. So I had a lot of different industries, different right. ones that I work with that were, you know, it was very much a, a busy job, but I just felt like I, I was a little bit bored, to be honest with you. I was a little bit bored with that. Uh, as much as it's exciting to work with like a new business owner, mm -hmm. they don't have a lot of money to pay you. So I always right. had that kind of bleeding heart syndrome where I was like, oh, I don't want to help them grow. And you kind of get stuck in that little bit of a pattern. So for me, it was shifting that mindset. Mm -hmm. And I was attracted to the fact that if I could learn one industry really, really deeply, it was mm -hmm. going to benefit my clients. So that was another piece that was really attractive to me. I will tell you though, I was nervous about being bored. Mm. That was a big thing with me. Like, am I going to be bored? And the opposite has happened because now I'm learning about the industry to a different level. So right. when I talk to a new client, it's, I'm not the same as somebody else that just does bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. I know I talk and say the same language. Like I'll talk to them about the three-way reconciliation. I'll talk to them about the IOLTA account. I will go down the road of talking about all those things that maybe 
the other person won't really know a lot about. And they can see the confidence. They can see that I know my stuff. And I see it just from working with different clients that are all in the same industry. I can see things and see patterns and things, which is real helpful to the clients as well. It's, man, it's like the jack of all trades. It really mm -hmm. has trouble being the, the master of one. And by taking the courage to take that leap, you really can go to a deeper level, like you're saying. And um, I'm just curious, what, what led you down the path of helping attorneys? Well, and I mentioned this in the course that I taught, I actually very, I did it very analytically, right? So mm -hmm. I was in a mastermind group with a bunch of other accountants and we were all having this conversation one day. And then the one that was leading the group, which is Seth David's group, 97 and up, he took me aside and said, Hey, you know, how, I, I didn't know how to pick, like, who do I pick? And he told me, just put it all on a piece of paper or a spreadsheet, which of course is an accountant, we pick the spreadsheet and put down all your clients put the industry, sort them up so that they're all grouped and then rate them. Like, who, you know, who do you answer the phone right away and know their family and everything else? Who is the one that you just drive you crazy that you don't want to work with anymore? And that really filtered down my list. And then I said, okay, now there's three. I didn't want to give up my startups. I had that one. And I thought about real estate because I own some real estate up North. And I thought, well, that might be a good one to pick. I was kind of bored with that though. And then I picked the three and attorneys I like to work with because they're professionals. They're great at giving me back my documents. And because they're so highly educated, having the conversations about advisory services and things like that is very easy because they're easy to talk to. They might not know all of my lingo. And sometimes I have to remind myself of that. Like, don't start saying AR and AP. They have no clue what I'm talking about. But having the conversations with them and they're pretty interested in knowing they respect the fact that I know what I know and I respect the fact that they know what they know. So it's, it's a kind of a, a great partnership. And I always look at my business as being a partner with people that I work with. I want them to grow and flourish. And if I can figure out ways to do that with technology, then it makes it better because it's more efficient. It's more accurate. I mean, there's lots of reasons why you want to implement the technology. And now I can put together one workflow and I made my workflow the best that I could possibly get. I don't have to search 8,000 apps. I can pick the four or five that work together like one ecosphere and it it's really helps them in the long run. They, they don't need to know all the pieces and the things that I use. They just need to see the end result. And that's all that's what they're buying from me is the end result. They want to have good books and they want to work towards future growth, profit and all of that. So it's pretty much what they're looking for. And you know, that's really a key to success there. Yeah. You've got two things going on here. Number one, we've talked about, you know, niching, but the mm -hmm. other thing is that even like as, as the icing on the cake mm -hmm. is the fact that you've added to it a, something different that even further distinguishes your business from all the other fish in the sea, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that, that focus on technology to take just a little bit of extra effort to dive in deep, really know the industry and then learn how can I maximize a process and really get it to where it's running like an engine mm -hmm. and then work with my clients to make sure that they're getting the best service possible. That exactly. is incredible. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. And, and so you do that for your clients and I'm suggesting that if you're tuning in, mm -hmm. you want to think about how could you do that and what would be the benefits really? How could you do that yourself of really looking at who you're a clients are and mm -hmm. then putting more focus and attention to them and, and really differentiating your business so that it, it stands out from all the same. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's one of the things when I heard you speak, mm -hmm. uh, it's scaling new heights. I was, I was excited to hear the things that you were sharing. I could tell that you're a rock star professional. Oh, and thank you. <laughs> just thought like, wow, you, you've got to share your journey because some of these things are counterintuitive. So as people are tuning in and they're listening to this, they're hearing this, what are some things you could tell them that would help them with that transition? I can tell them that it's, it's a hard journey. If you make the decision, you'd have to have the courage to do it. Have that little pile of cash because once you narrow down your marketing and you narrow down your focus, you're going to stop everybody from calling you once you start to niche down and really like blog posting is specific. I actually thought 
no one's going to want to read my blog post anymore if they've been following me all the way through. But your, your audience just shifts a little bit. Maybe I lost some people, but I gained people. But of course, all that takes time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always say, have that phone a friend that you need that. I mean, I have Matthew that I would call and tell him I was going to not do this anymore. I'd have my freak out moments because oh. they, those leads do slow down, but it's okay. And it's okay. Like I was afraid. That was one of the questions I asked my, in my mastermind group. I'm like, it, it sh am I going to just shut everything up? What do I do with my legacy clients? But I kept them and I have one person that's still doing them. And this, this has been a, a process. So you don't, you have to eat. So you still want to keep the leads. If leads are still going to come to you from older things that are out there. And if you're not at to the point where you can tell them, you know, I don't want to work with you anymore, but I'll find you somebody that maybe is, works with contractors. That's the point that I'm at now, but it mm -hmm. didn't happen when I flipped the switch to only working with attorneys. It's right. gradual. So you don't have to think of it in that mindset that, you know, this day is over. I'm done being a generalist. And this day is when I'm going to niche. You don't have to look at it that way. It kind of blends over a year, maybe even two years, depending on your industry. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of, you'll know when you get to that point where you're like, I am so busy. I don't want to take on any more clients. So, I mean, I just want to take on the ones that I'm specific to my niche and that's it. And then you find people, which is why we have the Facebook group, QB Community Live. It's because we have that place where people can all get together. And we have a whole section in there where you tell everybody what you're, if you're a niche practice. So now I can go there and say, okay, you know, Tanya is really good with, contractors i'm going to send that lead there or veronica is great with working with you know you know people that are that do a lot of selling of products so they have inventory all that she's wonderful at that so i'm going to send that to her so those are the things that you set up that network mm -hmm. they're happy and their new client that may have come to me that that's not my forte i've now passed that along so everybody wins in that situation so it's a good thing i love the advice and i love what you're doing you, you shared one thing that you've kind of got working now. If you could talk a little bit more about that and anything else that you're, you have coming into fruition in the future that you'd like to share. Um, you mean though, one thing that I, I shared one thing, which one was it? <laughs> She's like, I shared more than one thing, Kenny. <laughs> yeah. um, the Facebook community. Oh, my Facebook group. Yes. Yeah, so Matthew and I have our Facebook group. We have a Facebook group called QB, like QuickBooks, Community Live. And if you want to join us there, we are big believers in sharing is caring. And we help small business owners. If you're on the journey of niching, I'll be your accountability buddy. I know what it feels like. So if you want to join and you think it's a, you know, that's some place you want to be that you can ask questions to private group, ask questions. People will help you with QuickBooks, even business stuff. We go into the marketing realm. So um, we're very good about staying on top of that. Uh, also, um, if you are, I would say that's probably the best thing you can do if you want to follow us and to really follow this journey, we're more than happy to help anybody inside our group that needs any help at all. If we don't have the answer, we're perfectly fine with finding somebody that does. And our group is pretty big now. It's on, heading towards 2000 people. So we've got a quite, and it's a mix of small business and accountants. So it's not just uh, accountants. So you'll have a kind of a mix in there. And people are really kind in there, which is what we like. It's kind of the, the place we want to be. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Super awesome. And maybe there's a law practice or an attorney that has tuned in and they want to learn more about your business. Where could they go and what could they do? They can go to uh, artisanibookkeeping.com. And also, actually, I'm changing the name of my company. So coming ah. in January 1st, Artisani Accounting. It's not going far, but <laughs> I, I didn't realize what a big deal that is to switch over. So I'm going to sure you can still reach out to Artisani Bookkeeping and it will somehow map its way. That's when you hire people to do what they do <laughs> instead of me doing it. Cause I'm like, don't let me lose my SEO. But yeah. Right. So um, yeah. And it's A R T E S A N I bookkeeping.com. Super cool. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to Thank share you. some of your insights and what you've been doing. And as we were kind of wrapping up here, mm -hmm. if you could kind of end on, you've shared some great knowledge, by the way. Um, but just what's a, maybe a closing thought that may be able to help others on their journey to continue amplifying. I would say a closing thought would be, you know, if you, you kind of know deep down in your heart, what you need to do, mm -hmm. follow your heart with your business. I think it will get you, I've always led with my heart and everything that I do. I mean, it's good to analyze and, and think things through, but truly if you follow your heart, 
you are going to go miles and be successful in business. Super cool. Thank you so much for sharing. We appreciate you and I look forward to connecting again soon. Thank you for having me. To show your support, take a moment to amplify this message by sharing it online. To connect with me or gain more business growth insights, visit www.growthamplifiers.com. Thank you for your support.